Last week I showed you guys the stocking to my new office aquarium build. In today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about them. Now, if you didn't watch that video from a few days ago, I introduced an African shell dweller to this tank. Specifically, X Lamprolongus similis, or Neo Lamprolongus similis, or Lamprolongus similis, depending on which book and what year or where you're reading it from. It's a cichlid from Lake Tanganyika, which if you're not familiar with that, it's the largest lake in Africa by volume. Not by surface area, because Lake Victoria takes that. However, by sheer volume, Lake Tanganyika is actually the second largest freshwater lake in the world, accounting for about 18% of the world's freshwater supply. It's an extremely deep lake. However, these guys are not found in the deep parts. They're found more so along the coastal areas of the lake. This species generally in water up to 15 feet deep. Now, if you go on Google Images and try to find their natural habitat, what you're going to find is nothing but sand and shells. You see, there's several species of African shell dwellers. And one of the species that the similis often gets confused for is the Lamprolongus multifasciatus also known as the multi. Why does it get confused for them? Well, at first glance, they actually look identical. However, if you know what to look for, the differences are quite obvious. Now, if you were to look at a multifasciatus, you'll notice that the striping stops at their head. It actually does not continue to stripe over their head. In fact, the striping on a multifasciatus stops at their operculum, which is essentially their gill cover or gill plate, whatever you want to call it. However, with the similis, the striping continues over their head and over the gill plate. So above all else, that's the easiest way to tell the two apart. You don't need experience with both of them. You don't need two of them side by side. You just got to look at their striping and if it goes past their gill plate. The other species of shell dwellers are easy to tell apart. Now that you know what you have, you'll probably want to know who is who. Do I got males or do I have females? Well, unfortunately, these guys are monomorphic, meaning that they don't show signs of sex. However, the male gets to about twice the size of the female. So you almost have to wait until they reach sexual maturity to know what you have. When they do, the males can get one and a half inches to two inches in length. Yes, these guys only stay small. So you now know what you have, you know the sex. What about stalking or scaping the tank? Well, they kind of both go hand in hand. You see, when stalking shell dwellers, since they never venture much more higher than about six inches off the ground, you don't need a terribly tall aquarium. However, what that does mean is that if you do have shell dwellers, you can have other African cichlids that spend a lot of their time higher up in the water column. But when it comes to how many fish per gallon, it actually goes how many fish per square foot. Ideally, it's one male per square foot, and each fish should have at least one shell. I prefer to provide each fish with at least four to five shells, giving them options and other areas of refuge. So with one male per square foot, you can have several females with him. Now, depending on the size of the tank and the layout of it, you can most likely exceed those limitations. But when dealing with a smaller aquarium like this, I definitely wouldn't go much bigger. Ideally, you would start out with a pair. In no time, they'll start spawning and establish your colony for you. And on the topic of spawning, these guys are pretty easy to breed, but it all starts with the water parameters and quality of the water. Now, in my opinion, these guys will do fine in any type of alkaline water, meaning that the pH is over 7. Why? Chances are the ones you're going to get are going to be tank raised locally, and the water is going to be extremely similar to your own. So my suggestion is that if your water's pH is already over 7, don't mess with it. Your fish are going to appreciate stable parameters rather than ones that are constantly fluctuating by you attempting to give them what's ideal. For example, the pH in this tank is 7.6. When it comes to the temperature of the water, I like to keep it between 77 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or 25 and 27. Now these guys tend to be a carnivore type cichlid, but in my opinion, they'll eat just about anything you offer them, as long as it's a quality food designed for cichlids. I feed these guys a combination of flakes and small pellets two to three times a day. As for the quality of the water, my preference is 30% every three days. And with such a small fish, this will keep nitrates undetectable and water in pristine condition. So if you followed these basic guidelines that I've given you, you'll have them spawning in no time. Now getting them to spawn is one thing, getting the fry to survive is another. You'll have the best chances of the fry surviving in a well-established aquarium meaning that the shells might have a little bit of algae buildup or perhaps a little bit of detritus. 
or something along those lines to give the fry a chance to graze if they have to. However, since the fry tend to stay in clusters and all in one spot, they're really easy to spot feed. Personally, I just grind up some flakes into a powder and make sure that it falls in the general area that they're in. They might not eat it out of the water column, but once it lands, they'll go ahead and pick away at it. Now, given the fact that you'll probably have a thriving colony in no time, my suggestion would obviously be to have a variety of shells within the aquarium. Anywhere from half inch to two inch, giving the fish the ability to choose their homes that's appropriate to their body size at the time. Now, you don't need any specific species of snail shell. However, what I like to look for is the escargot type or the rounded shell. Although there's the do-it-yourself option where you can use PVC parts and they will function the same. They'll bury them and make them their own. Now last week the number one question that I got on this fish was, how do you clean the tank? You see, since the fish customize and change the scape of the tank exactly to their likings, how do I go about cleaning it without destroying it? Well, to be honest, I don't vacuum the substrate at all. I don't do it for two reasons. One, I have proper circulation within the aquarium and it hasn't necessarily been an issue just yet. The second thing is that if anything does collect in the aquarium, it tends to collect over on this side. So if I do have to vacuum the substrate, I'm not destroying very much. Lastly, since there's fry in the aquarium, I'd rather leave the uneaten food in there for them as opposed to removing it. And since it's such a small amount of uneaten food or waste, it doesn't have the opportunity to have an impact on the overall water quality of the tank based on my water change schedule. So with that said, this tank is actually very low maintenance. And that means I spend more time enjoying the aquarium than taking care of it. Which is most important to me because watching these fish is entirely fascinating. Now if you remember last week, I showed you guys how the aquascape began and what it was like a day later after they got in the tank. You see, these guys are constantly rearranging the aquarium. Digging, moving the shells around, burying their shells, creating their own little homes and of course constantly interacting with each other. The males displaying to each other, flaring their gills, there's lots of tail slapping, and just constant activity. It's just an all around non-stop interesting aquarium to have. So if you're looking for a small yet interesting fish, or you'd like to get into African cichlids yet you don't have a really big aquarium, give African shell dwellers a try. And I think I'll end the video on that note. If you have any further comments or questions, leave them in the comments section below. In a few weeks or months, I'll do another update on this aquarium and let you guys know how everything is going. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you do if that's something you'd like to see. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If not, join me next Thursday and I'll have something different for you.